want to gain more stamina but don't want to lose any muscle gains, watch this. Our first caller is Daniel from Georgia. What's going on, Daniel? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, first off, thanks for having me on. So um, high-level overview sort of headline here is – how do I increase my VO2 max while having a nuclear metabolism and not sacrificing gains? So uh, the context here, like I grew up, Sal, probably very similar to you, like long distance runner, very skinny, like strong wind. There goes Dan. Um, and Sal found strength training and was able to pack on a bunch of muscle. And now I've been going through MAPS anabolic, which is awesome. Um, but I've worn a like wrist worn heart rate monitor for the last seven years, whether it's Fitbit or Garmin or whoop or whatever. Um, and I've noticed with weight gain and strength gains via two max going down and resting heart rate going up and trending in a way that I, I don't like. So I'm curious if you guys have any tips or tricks on how to do that while not sacrificing you know, mass and strength gains in the gym. Dan, any, any particular reason, uh, why you want other than just, you know, you know, having a, a better VO two max is, do you have anything specific? Why, why you want to uh, improve that? Uh, no, it's more of just like a longevity thing. Like a big fan of like Dr. Peter Atia and, and some of his research on VO two max being a, a sort of all cause mortality reduction and closely followed by strength. So, um, want to make sure that I can, you know, be capable in any scenario that I encounter. Got it. Um, but there, I, I'm not like a professional athlete or anything. I, okay. I Didn't you poke holes the other day in the Peter? Atiyah yeah, thing? Didn't we talk it was about a little that? extreme. But OK, here's the deal. You, you like you said something that I, I, I like. You want to be ready for whatever. Right. So you kind of want to be fit overall. You're noticing that you're losing some stamina because you're not focusing on it. That's totally normal. And you don't want to lose your gains or do too much to the point where you start to lose muscle and strength. Your best bet is, uh, you know, sprints or sprint type activities. So you could do like high intensity interval training style workouts a couple days a week will do a good job of maintaining a decent VO2 max, but it's more like resistance training than long distance steady state type cardio uh, type training. So Sprints are really good on a on a, a bike or hills. on yeah on at on hills or running um, intervals with a jump rope where you're doing lots of speed or intervals on a rower. These are short bouts. The total session would be 20 minutes maybe or 30 minutes at the most with these bouts of you know maximal exertion for 30 seconds and then you slow down and wait for your heart rate to drop back down and then repeat it. And that's this is a great way to build stamina in a way that is more muscle friendly than you know doing you know an hour or more of kind of steady state uh, type of training I, I want to point out too that uh, increasing your vo2 max is something you could do pretty quick too though so like it responds real quick yeah like in a week so you you could literally improve it that fast so there I I, I see lots of different things that we can do here we can take the advice that you're saying Sal or you can interrupt your strength training every four weeks or so with a, a week of, you know, really pushing on the cardio and trying to get the VO2 back up. I mean, there's nothing that says that he's not going to lose all his muscle in one week, no. you know, so you're not going to, it's not going to, and it'll probably benefit you somewhat in your strength training. So if you just want to, so I, I don't do anything. I don't, I'm not like this, uh, hard up on my VO2 max, but this is, I, I'll run the mile and I, I and probably not as frequent as every month, but I like to get on there every couple months to make sure I can do it. And that's, and all I, all I'm really trying to do is to say, Hey, I, I want to be able to, if I need to turn it on for a mile, I can get after it and keep my mile time under say, you know, eight minutes in and, case the and, coppers get you. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, no, I mean, actually for the exact reason that Daniel's saying, like, I, yeah. I, I agree. I want, um, you know, I, I want to be able to still get up there and, and move and do those things. I think it, there's tremendous benefit as we age to still be able to do that stuff. And I just don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also care more about being stronger and building muscle. And, and, and I tend to lean more that way. But then what I'll do is I'll just, you know, every month, month or two, get on there and make sure that I can get that mile time under under eight minutes. If I can't, then, you know, for a week or so, I'll, I'll train it, get after it and get it back down. Yeah, I always consider this, too, just for athletic purposes and wanting to move uh, quickly and, and to be able to maintain that ability. So that's something I'll cycle this back in. And um, to Sal's point, doing a little bit more anaerobic type 
cardio uh, where I'm doing it in bursts uh, because it's to me it's always translated more to uh, things that I'm more interested in doing and in um, you know having those abilities to be more explosive I want to train that so um, and it will help you know in terms of like increasing that vo2 max uh, you'll get the benefit of that as well you know it's a great program Daniel I know you're doing maps anabolic but have you tried map strong? Uh, I haven't yet. Yeah. No, Dude, work sessions are amazing. Map Strong is incredible. The work sessions uh, are focused on improving your work capacity, and there's carries and sleds, and you're doing okay. you know AMRAP sessions. I mean, it'll get your it definitely gets your heart rate up. I loved that program, um, and okay. remember, consider you know when we wrote the program with Robert Oberst, he said there's a there's somewhat of a stamina component in, in a high level strongman competition. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, if you go in there and you're super strong, like a power lift, you get your ass kicked. If you don't have some athleticism and some, and some stamina, I, I map strong, this work sessions are incredible. And they're along the lines of kind of what I'm recommending, except they're, they're structured and they're programmed. So if you don't, if you, if you don't have that program, we'll send it to you. If you do try it out, I think you'll really like it. What I love about it is just people don't really consider that. It's this is such usable endurance and, and usable cardiovascular effort. Like when you're carrying things, like you you have that kind of stamina you need, you know, for everyday activities, and it, it definitely has this massive carryover uh, for everything else, just functionally throughout the day. Yeah, that would be. I, I've got anabolic and performance and aesthetics. I, strong is like the only one I don't have, but um, you got no, it now. It we'll, we'll send it over to you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Boom. No problem. Thanks for calling, Daniel. Yeah, that uh, I like. You know, I mean, okay. So when it comes to training, of course, there's specific skills you can train for, and then there's specific, I guess, aesthetic goals and longevity goals. And when it comes to like you, like Justin was saying, like usable stamina. The explosive kind of higher intensity stamina tends to be more usable in everyday life when you really need it, a aside from being able to walk, right? So if you can walk good distances, that's probably mm -hmm. pretty usable. Uh, the sled, heavy carries, sprints have always given me a tremendous amount of return. And, and, they, and they've really never, I mean, you can overdo anything, right? But they've never taken away from my strength or muscle gains. In fact, oftentimes they actually contribute uh, to the strength of muscle gain simultaneously while I'm building stamina uh, in those things. Yeah. And, and just in terms of like doing cardio and like going long distances, like it's just, there's a lot less opportunity for that. Now I know a lot of people like their days are just crammed with a million different uh, activities and work related items. And so to be able to kind of be efficient with that, but also have a lot of like cardiovascular carryover doing work sessions to me, makes the most sense. I'd be really curious to see uh, some studies or research around, you know, if you actually just ran a mile every day before your workout and you, it's less than eight minutes right? and you just keep that mile time low. So, you know, you can do it and, you know, maybe and obviously improve on it if you're doing it every single day. That's not going to hinder you building much muscle. I mean, eight minutes or less. Yeah, especially when you get to the point where you're really, you're conditioned. And right. You're it. conditioned and you can, you can run that mile. And it's just more health focused. Yeah. Really. And, th yeah. and I think that's his main, that's what I got from this. Right. Yeah. So he, he listened to Peter Tia and him talk about all the research around, you know, mm -hmm. having, yeah. in, having improved VO2 max. Hey, run a mile every day. Run a mile every day before your training, uh, your training, and keep that mile time down. And I'm sure that you're gonna your VO2 max will be in a very good place for overall longevity. It'll probably carry over into your training and support that, and only make you better at your workouts. Yeah, you know, other things that are overlooked are like um, complexes, three exercises put together. They used to call these giant sets in bodybuilding, but or or even one like you do barbell squats at a relatively high intensity for 20 reps with a 45 second rest yeah, in between sets. Well be your heart's going to be screaming. Oh yeah, you do five sets of that and you're 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 done, right? And you're going to get a lot of work capacity or you you string together three exercises that are somewhat difficult, of course maintain good form. You're going to get a decent amount of stamina. Now you're not going to get that long endurance type of stamina which, you know, if that's your goal then you want to train that way, but in terms of the health effects you don't need, you can do those kind of shorter bursts of anaerobic activity and get quite a bit. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.